against Americans and the West in recent weeks. The Supreme Court is wrestling with whether public officials can block critics from commenting on their social media accounts. The justice has heard arguments Tuesday in two cases involving lawsuits filed by people who were blocked after leaving critical comments on social media accounts belonging to school board members in Southern California and the city manager of Port Huron, Michigan. On Wall Street, the Dow up by 123 points, the Nasdaq rose 61, the S&P advanced 27. 
more at townhall.com. The United States Constitution guarantees every American fundamental rights and protection of life, liberty, and property. Salem is celebrating our founding documents with a special offer, a 1953 Omen U.S. Constitution lithograph. To understand the value of these lithographs is to know the story. A master lithographer immigrant named Theodore Omen came to this country to find the American dream. Seventy years ago, in 1953, Omen printed a limited number of these exceptional Constitution lithographs. Go to SalemEventsStore.com to read Omen's entire story. America's most important document stands as a testament to all Americans to maintain their liberty, freedom, and inalienable rights. Buy it and display it proudly. Buy a gift for your family and friends and for all the teachers in your community. There is a limited number, so act today. Go to SalemEventsStore.com to get your exclusive 1953 Omen U.S. Constitution lithograph while supplies last. That's SalemEventsStore.com. I buy it. Stocks rebound on Wall Street. Stocks rose on Wall Street, but the market still finished with a loss for October. The S&P 500 rose six-tenths of 1% Tuesday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 124 points, or four-tenths of 1%. The Nasdaq rose by half a percentage point. The corporate earnings season is in full swing this week. JetBlue fell 11% after the airline's loss for the third quarter was steeper than Wall Street expected. The investors' attention now turns to the Federal Reserve. Fed officials are expected to say Wednesday that they're leaving interest rates unchanged. Paul Harloff, New York. The UAW won significant concessions in tentative settlements ending their strikes against Detroit's automakers. Now GM, Ford, and Stellantis higher labor costs exceeding $1 billion per year per company. News and analysis at townhall.com. I'm Keith Peters reporting. Millions have lost their homes in Congo's growing conflict. Correspondent Charles Zoledesma reports. The United Nations Migration Agency says a record 6.9 million people have been displaced by conflict across Congo, making it one of the world's largest displacement and humanitarian crises. The International Organization for Migration says the decades-long conflict has been the primary reason for this displacement. The area has long been overrun by thousands of armed men a share of the region's gold and other resources. Now, outside multinational forces deployed to help stop the violence are under pressure to move as frustration grows. I'm Charles Zimadeva. Police in Bangladesh have clashed with opposition supporters who are blocking roads to demand that the Prime Minister resign. They want the Prime Minister to hand power over to a non-partisan caretaker government to oversee elections. More at townhall.com. Red health can indicate risk for heart attack, stroke, and amputation. If you have red health and signs for walking, get checked for peripheral artery disease or TAD. TAD is plaque buildup in mainly the leg arteries. Be sure to ask your physician for an ankle bronchial index, also called an ABI test, where they use blood pressure cuffs to analyze the blood pressure in your legs. If they discover you have arterial plaque that's limiting blood flow to your feet, medicine and a regimented walking program are frontline treatment. If PAD is in its advanced stages, your physician may schedule a surgical intervention. Minimally invasive tools are available to remove plaque and restore blood flow, including cardiovascular systems Diamondback 360 Atherectomy System, which sands away plaque and Approaching a railroad plaque. crossing. It's important to discuss all options with your physician, and if told you have no option, get a second opinion. Take a stand against amputation. For more information, go to standagainstamputation.com. That's standagainstamputation.com.
Canada's divorce is a big thing that's plaguing our, our community. Approaching a railroad yes. crossing. It's I honestly do. I think a lot of people get married for the wrong reason. A lot of people get married because somebody fine. They got a big old booty. Or they got nice feet. Or they got long hair. They blonde. They got pretty eyes. Straight teeth. They 6'3", 6 6'2". 6 I want a man that's tall. Or some dudes. You know, it's, it's like... Once you get a little older and more mature, you realize that stuff is it's pointless to focus all of your energy on that. I'd rather have a woman who's average and that's a great woman that adds value to my life and that's called to, to support me and my purpose than have a fine woman that I'm arguing with every day. It, it's, it's just... Men will realize this once you get burned so many times that it really doesn't matter about the looks. You'd rather have a good woman. And women begin to be, become more beautiful again by the way they act. There's women that I once thought was so beautiful and I despise at this point because of their, act, their attitude. And there's women that I dated before that weren't really that good looking when I first met them. I wasn't like stunned. And then they became a very beautiful person that I really liked and I was more attracted to them uh, after, you know, experiencing their character and behavior. It's like, wow, you, you are, like, you're a good woman. That's, that's your value. You can't find a good woman everywhere. You can find fine women everywhere you go. And now they stop making them. They just keep making them. They keep, they keep coming consistent. When a man is 60, 60 years old, there's still a 25-year-old, a 30-year-old that's smoking. And you go around the world, you find them smoking hotter than the ones in America. And wherever, wherever the case may be. And so you shouldn't focus on that because if you're, that's your attention, you're going to always be looking for the next woman that's look better than the one you got. And, and I'm telling you, there's no shortage of Even if you got the baddest one you ever seen, there's one coming, coming after her that's going to be fine. And so that's not the way women should look at it. Same thing, I mean, men should look at it. Same thing with women. You got a guy that's, oh, I got a guy that's 6'2". You can still got a 6'3", they got a better body than your husband. But where, where, where do your, you know, uh, commitment lie? It lies in who the person is and what value added um, to the relationship. Uh, what, what value do they add to the relationship? And I think that if people could focus on that, they would do better. I teach young women, I, I, young men all the time. I say, yeah, I wouldn't get married until I'm in my 30s. Don't get married till you're in your 30s. Don't date women until you're in your 30s. That's what I would say. Unless you are some uh, extremely mature, you're financially stable, you feel like you have a lot of life experience and you've grown up fast, I wouldn't date in my 20s. Because as a man, and this is the conversation that was had between the two gentlemen that were sitting on the couch. I made a video about it. I'm going to make a video about it. And it, was, it was extraordinary. Um, what, what happened between the two men is that the one man was sitting on the couch and saying, well, I can't pay. 100% of everything in my house, so I got to do 50 50 with my wife. And this is what he asked me, and it blew my socks off. I, it blew my socks off so much that I followed this guy. I said, I got to follow this guy. This guy's this so much wisdom, I'm about to pass out. So he says to, to the young man, he says, Do your wife good for you? He, he said that, but because he said, You know, your wife is not going to truly be able to love you until you allow her to stay at home with the kids and take care of take care of the house and be the man that God called you to be. She's not going to fully love you, right? So he set him up. Dude said, how would you say that? My wife do love me. He said, do your wife cook for you? He goes, yeah. He said, do your wife clean for you? Yeah, she clean for me. Do your wife do some other stuff around the house? He goes, yeah. He said, you should be ashamed of yourself. You got your wife working full time and she doing all that. Why are you doing that to your wife? And, it, and I was like, <laughs> Yeah, you do want your wife to be nurturing and all those things, but then you got to work it full time. So, brother, make your mind up. And, and what came down to it is the guy was making excuses because he makes $17 an hour. And he's like, I can't pay 50 50 He's like, well, get two jobs. I mean, I, I can't, it, I could, it couldn't be more correct. When I was younger, I thought that would be stupid. Now that I'm older and I realize my goal as a man is to allow my wife to not work and she can stay at home and take care of our children. And I go work. And if I got to get two jobs, I just have to get two jobs. Now, I'm fortunate enough that I don't have to get two jobs. But I do travel a lot, and I got to put food on the table. 
and provide my wife with whatever she needs, anything she needs. And my philosophy, and people may disagree with my philosophy, is that my wife wants something, I need to just make more money. I'm not going to tell her no. It, it within reason, right? My wife is not an unreasonable woman. I mean, she's making a, a, a tremendous sacrifice by sitting at home raising our baby. And so whatever she needs, I'm going to go get. If I got to go make a work an extra job, I got to go do something, my wife is not going to go without. That's my objective. And I tell men, don't marry until you are at that point. It's no, it's no harm, no foul for you to wait until you're financially stable enough and you're advancing your career enough that you can afford to have your wife stay at home and take care of What are you looking at? Damn.